The holiday shopping season, of course, fast approaching. And according to a new survey out, holiday spending expected to be on the rise, particularly amongst younger shoppers. Here's tech expert Carmi Levy. He joins us to delve into this a little further. Carmi, good morning to you. And uh, lots of people undoubtedly will be online shopping in the coming weeks. What do shoppers need to know when it comes to staying safe online? Yeah, there's no question, Jeff. This is definitely the season. And so you've really got to lean in when you see a, a a deal that almost feels too good to be true, or it, it offers a free gift card or free shipping or some sort of hyperbolic statement offer. Uh, lean in and make sure that you know who you're dealing with. Do you trust that or have you bought from them before? Can you go back to their website? Have they been around for a long time? What kind of reviews do they have? In many cases, these messages will pop into your inbox. It looks like it's from a store or an e-commerce shop that you've that you've seen before. But if you look really closely, hover over the email address. Uh, it isn't recognizable. And when you click on that button for that really great deal, it might take you to a website that harvests your information information then uses it to launch additional attacks and so the the, the rule that the golden rule in e-commerce especially now as we shift more of our attention online during this accelerating shopping season know who you're dealing with and back away if you're not sure okay uh, a big headline in the last 24 hours currently is the fact that TikTok is being sued by 14 u.s states for wreaking havoc on kids mental health Let's talk more about what the states are arguing. Uh, they're saying that that the endless scroll driven by an algorithm, it feeds addiction, which is bad at any age, but particularly for younger kids. Those challenge videos, the viral videos, they encourage kids to do things that will get them injured or in some cases get them killed. Uh, there are beauty filters, uh, avatars, things like that, that, that reinforce negative body image and kind of make kids feel like they're inadequate. Again, significantly negative mental health impacts. Uh, and in some cases, they're even sending notifications late at night to kids to engage with the app affecting their sleep. And so it's almost like a pile on. Department of Justice has already sued uh, TikTok. Uh, a whole bunch of states and provinces are doing the same. School boards here in Ontario are targeting the company. They're under threat of potentially being shut down in, in, in January if they don't sell themselves. So everyone is going after this company for being a bad actor, not looking out for the interests of young kids. And this is just the latest in a, a growing number of threats to the company. All right. Also, a big headline this past week, Carmi, is a Ticketmaster. They have changed the rules after Taylor Swift fans reported digital hacks of tickets. Just exactly how did this happen? And with shows fast approaching in Toronto and Vancouver, what are Canadian Swifties? What do they need to know, Carmi? The company says they weren't attacked again. They were, of course, breached this past May. 40 million customers had their personal and financial information compromised. What's happening now is now that that information is out there, cyber criminals are taking that data and combining it with other data like passwords from other breaches, and then they're signing into people's Ticketmaster accounts if they haven't updated their passwords. So the one thing that we need to, to kind of remember here is if you have not updated your Ticketmaster password, word or on any other platform as well it applies across the board go and change it now that way if your information is out there you slam the door on cyber criminals they can't sign in what they're doing is they're signing into Ticketmaster accounts and then selling the tickets from within there almost under the noses of victims hmm, okay uh Carmen, the crtc we we're talking about this yesterday on the show uh has given canada's big telecoms until next month to make significant progress in lowering international roaming fees. How does Canada rank when it comes to the rest of the world? Oh, you're not going to like the answer to this one, Carolyn. We rank terribly. Uh, if you look at most in the U.S. or in Europe, uh, these kinds of remote fees, when you're out of country and you want to use your wireless services, uh, they're capped, in most cases, below $5 per day per account. That's the way it used to be in Canada. We used to be subject to huge roaming fees. Then they instituted this flat rate approach. It started at $5, but it's been going up and up and up in recent years. In some cases, you can pay $50 
15 or $16 per phone per day, which I don't have to tell you for a family on a vacation can add up very quickly. So we're paying a lot more than everyone else. And there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Every time I look at my invoice, it's going up and I want to know why. And thankfully, the government also wants to know why it's forcing the telecommunications companies to finally play ball. Yeah, listen, I'm with you, Carmi. It seems like we've been talking about this uh, forever, lowering fees, whether it be roaming or cell phone fees. And uh, yeah, I open up my bill. <laughs> it's doing nothing but going up, not down as well. Carmi, right we got to leave it there. Good to see you as always. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.